what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of appreciation to Abraham Mohammed, Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Billy Highvolt, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chow Young Cat, Dank, Dave Rakia Gafford, David Wayne Foster, Edwin Johnson, Erwin Jennison's, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Henrik86, Jeronism, Joshua Balsimo, Kirsten Smith, Liam Nedrick, Life Is Short, Matt, Nagara, Nybai, Katar Craig, Reinhardt, Rene, Sally Ballis, Silver Umbrella, Skeptic936, Texas Mike, The Flat Earth Channel, Com, the Flat Earth Sun, Moon and Zodiac Clock app, Tina Baker and Tom Herkins. So a massive shout out of appreciation to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now we are actually joined by a few people in both Discord and G+, so I'll raise the mic on them while I get myself uh, set up for the first live show. Yeah, I was, I was going to... He's got a perfect name coming up with all these fantasy ideas unorthodox perfect name all right ah oh, it was a good laugh yesterday i laughed a lot i missed that on uh quite a few of yesterday well, you could always play it again. <laughs> you could uh, put the reverse square law into effect so you can catch the inverse square law comet. It's that Dave chocolate crazy Friday. Mm. Yeah. Yambu Homte. How's that sound? Say that again. Yambu Homte. What? <laughs> I'm trying to talk Harmonian. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't you. You are. I don't understand Harmonian. <laughs> I know Romanian. Oh, I know I romaine know. lettuce. I know romaine lettuce. Is he still getting coffee or are we in the pre show? I don't know. Sometimes he, he ninja records us. Growing coffee beans. <laughs> ninja records us. That... Yeah, like by not telling us, he sneaks it up on us. Yeah. I think Nathan should ask the other Nathan to give him his sledgehammer. You know how I many? Which Nathan? There's like four Nathans in Flat Earth. Uh, Nathan Thompson, you know, he does this hammer practice routine. Should Nathan should borrow the hammer to grind coffee. <laughs> yeah, there's a balance of ping pong or a hammer while citing the periodic table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. He does shit like that. <laughs> yeah. And one time he was citing a uh, pie. Like all the digits in pi, I was like, what the fuck? 
pretty impressive. Why would, why would you side pie when you could just go eat one? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you know, you need to go. You know, you need to go to get them. You need to go to the tart area. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> uh, you, first, you'd have to find out what the crust is about, so you can land on it. <laughs> it can I just say say that if pie is sighted, then it has to be eaten. Well said. Arteria, very good, Nathan. Hey guys, did you saw yesterday this uh, ex CIA officer? Mm -mm. No. Uh, he he's on uh, YouTube on uh, Dirt's video saying that they call NASA not a space agency, and he said that all the disinformation comes from there. That explains why he's an ex CIA agent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like a, like very publicly like known figure he appears on oh, David of Steele yeah I see I see him around for even way before even at, before I got into Friday he was a whistleblower yeah it's funny to hear him say, yeah, in our world, it's not a space agency. <laughs> <laughs> like, your world, you were a CIA, buddy. <laughs> so, what the hell? <laughs> uh, we got him saying that. We got a Polish cosmonaut saying the Earth is flat. We got a lot of things happening. I'd like to sit back and watch and see who steps up next and see what this is all about. And uh, then... Sorry, we can... Sorry. Yeah. Oh, go for it. No, I was saying we can probably make a... <laughs> I was saying we can probably make a prediction. One of these days, maybe next year or the year after, the governments will probably come out and say the earth is flat. Sorry to do this to you one. You it, if someone else is talking, you do cause feedback if you if your mind's not um if your line's not muted. No I will lower my uh, sound. Perfect. Because I think some high pitch noises come back. Yeah. Someone's speakers just playing back through it. Headphones, whatever. Uh, ten Tenzin, have in yeah. mind that uh, Jaron on the FE conference said that he has he's in contact with two or three celebrities, like big ones that are uh, that may soon come out and no i'm just sharing information yeah i don't give much stock to celebrities no it's that's just about the public uh, yeah that's what i mean <laughs> that's that's they come out on a lot of issues and most of them bunk and now they're going to come out on something on flat earth and be tied to it We'll see the rapper B.O.B. He went off the radar of the show business. Yeah, I, I, I don't follow all that. I, I think uh, I sat down with Chocolate and he just gave me good questions. That's enough of, this, of a celebrity for me. I don't need someone who's making $10 million a year doing movies to validate anything for me. Wait, you saying B.O.B. because he came out with F.E.D.? He's now less popular. No, no, I'm not saying he's less popular. He just oh. like step aside from this show business thing, like Cohen Benjamin did. Well, some people step aside to make money. Other people step aside because they ain't making money, and then they got to say something about why they stepped aside. Yeah, true. But still, that makes it more popular with the young ones. So they'll start asking questions and they'll stumble upon people like us. That's the good part of it. 
Well, if you're a parent and you have young ones, hopefully you're not allowing B.O.B., whoever that is, to uh, be the guy to explain anything. No, it's just it's lots of young people who who be in this type of social, like, internet area that they won't be, they won't stumble upon us, but if they hear rumors about that, about somebody that they, some of their idols, they will, They'll have questions. No, I know what you're saying. I'm just very leery of all that connections that that people make with celebrities. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it. I don't give them much stock. You know why? Because they bleed just like we bleed. They're just like us. So. Yeah. Look at the Neil deGrasse Tyson. So were, were, were right? you half handedly trying to call me a celebrity before, tough man? Just... No, I'm saying <laughs> that, that's crazy. You're, I'm saying you're 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 above them. You're equal to them because you're a human. But you at least will just share the facts and not use your celebrity to do it. <laughs> I got you. Although you got the best looking icon on Ballbusters. Yeah. Uh, I thought Ranty oh. had the best, actually. Who? Ranty. I thought his, you know, oh, oh, with the 0. camera. 0.8 seconds of footage that he got, <laughs> you know, <laughs> was was the best 0. 0.8 seconds out of all of them. Yeah, but that kid oh, in the slice. Di different shots of the camera. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool, too. It just looked just cool. Well done. Yours looks cool too, Chocolate, but it's just like an after effect over your icon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not, you know. What do you think Ranty icon. was? What do you think Ranty was pointing his, his camera to? <laughs> I don't know. Probably something in the distance. No, Chocolate's icon. Oh, I see. <laughs> Ranty wanted to see it. <laughs> That's all. Is that South Africa? Where? I think he might. I know someone else was just, just dropped. Maybe he's working. Sorry, it's just a big gang in the water. Yeah? Bit busy. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So. Did you guys uh, forget to get together and do those uh, short spots for the eight questions? No, we haven't forgotten. Just haven't done it yet. We will. I think it's very important. Yeah. They will get passed around quite well. Yeah, I would have thought so. Most people only hear sure. the housekeeping questions themselves and then might occasionally hear one of them pulled apart in an argument. Well, when you hear it in the argument, obviously you've got both sides of the argument. So it's more confusing. Whereas if you just lay it out one at a time, I think it's I think it'll definitely get you know, people more familiar with the arguments or more capable of having the arguments. Well, the way, the way I foresee it, if guys do it it's just a suggestion of course uh is do one housekeeping question at a time keep it as short as possible but succinct and at the end say uh tune in to nathan oakley 1980 and put an adverb on it yeah and that way when we send it out someone's going to listen to a five eight minute clip it's not long and then they'll hear the adverb and it's short it's, it's pointing to the show, and you can hear the other seven housekeeping questions. You just say, and there's seven more housekeeping questions. So now their you know, curiosity is, well, what are the other seven? Right. Just kind of do it that way. And I still haven't heard... 
still haven't heard from the person who I asked, can you have gas pressure without a container? Get back to me. And they never will. I was going to say, they never will. I mean, I that's funny. Yeah, I've been asking yeah, for me. I got a couple at work. I'm still waiting on that response. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny how on the spot when you ask it, they try to answer it, but they haven't thought it through, you know? So the video that's got the nice concise section with Dr. Daniel Faulkner having his claims on Facebook and his mm. rebuttals to the question of gas pressure being uh, laid bare by him. That'll make its own toe tag. I mean, it'll be short because it'll just be a summary. It won't be like the full Anthony getting each message and then so on and so forth. It's, it'll just be, here's the string of messages. Here's his claim, gravity's a force. Here's the debunking of his 100-year-old, 100-year-old out-of-date rhetoric. Speaking of Anthony, did you saw his video about Hillbilly Blue Balls? Yeah, I did, yeah. Nice work. You know how the ballers say 7 billion people believe the Earth is a sphere. Uh, and then they forget that if you ask the same 7 billion people what, what gravity is, they don't think of the bending of time space. And yet, it's what they go by today. So, 7 billion people don't know what gravity is by today's standards, but 7 billion people supposedly believe the Earth is a sphere. So, there goes that argument that uh, the total number of people believing something makes something right. Right. I thought the guy yesterday was incredibly useful as much as I got really frustrated with him because we ultimately found out why is it that they'll circle jerk you around indefinitely? And the answer is because they still want to make their point. So having gone through that yesterday with the dude that was on the debate, one of them's gone out, one of them goes out on Nathan Oakley 1980 tonight. So for those of you watching this yesterday. Anyway, um, the reason is simple because they've got a point that they want to make. So I'll just give a brief synopsis of what happened yesterday. Guy comes in and asserts you can't have a gas pressure gradient in a container. Now instantly that's taken to the to task because you can have a gas pressure gradient in a container, that's ludicrous. So we then lead him to say exactly that himself. In other words, admit that you can have a gas pressure gradient in a container, and he describes it by way of equalization. Prior to equalization, obviously it's gradiated, and then eventually it reaches the point where it's all the same. In any event, he wouldn't concede that he'd got it wrong in his assertion that you can't have a gas pressure gradient in a container, that assertion being incorrect and disproven by his own words, he strung us along for about 20 solid minutes, refusing point blank to concede that he was wrong in that assertion. And then after 20 minutes, he finally gets to the to the crescendo, which is to say, if you claim Earth as a container, then that's false because you can't have a gradient in a container. So after the 20 minutes of him refusing point blank to relinquish that point, he finally gets to the reason why. And then he did it again later with an example I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, the one that went out on yesterday's show for those of you watching. Same thing. It's the point that he got kicked out. Oh, that was it. He wanted to make a, a false equivalence with water versus gas. So we're asking, obviously, how can you have gas pressure without a container? He starts asking us questions about how a lake would be contained and then babbles off the same inconsequential question over and over again. How can you have containment? How can you have containment or define containment? So... The reason for that was the same. He needed to make a false equivalence with a liquid when we were talking about gas. So he refused point blank to concede that water isn't gas to the point where he said no water is the same as gas, at which point he got kicked out. But because they need to make their false equivalence about how water can potentially lay flat on a surface as opposed to gas which would expand in all directions and fill the available volume. So that false equivalence is going to get held on to regardless of how humiliating it is. Now, the reason I've just detailed all that was because the same applies to Hillbilly Blue Balls. Exactly the same principle. So he wants to make an assertion that the open system that is Earth in a vacuum as a sphere is possible because you can have gas pressure without a container. 
here's my demonstration of gas pressure, quote, without a container. And then he shows you transferring gas pressure from one container to another. Well, that's obviously false, but he wants to make the assertion that, no, my demonstration squares the circle for me, that you can have gas pressure without a container. So his point is that, no, you can have earth with gas pressure next to a vacuum because of my pipe container demonstration. And he doesn't want to let go of that. So based on that, it, it, we can essentially humiliate him indefinitely. And cognitively, he'll allow it. He will literally allow Anthony, me, and everybody on this panel to completely humiliate him, potentially forever, based on his obviously incorrect assertion. Because he needs to make his point at the end. That was my point. Anyway, I'm going to start no, the live show. That, that, that was great. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already, how dare you, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the community debate then go to nathanoakley.com and check out the Flat Earth Debate Forum which you should definitely all join. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion right here, right now, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Tenth Man, Chocolate Saiyan, The One, Righteous Force, Flatzoid, and I believe that's it in G+. Good to have you all. Good, good morning. Good afternoon. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon. Hello, wherever you may be. And we've also joined by a whole bunch of people in Discord, so hello to everyone in Discord. Hey Nathan, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? Anyway, let's do housekeeping. Can somebody... I know I've already heard from Righteous in Discord. I know it works. Fine. Any evidence of Earth curvature? Not from La Jolla. Not from Discord. If I understand the question correctly, you're asking if a plane is curving. I don't know what's the reason for that question. Because there's a fundamentalist religious zealot assertion that Earth is a sphere. And that would necessitate necessitate it curving in some form or another. No, I'm sorry, it's not a sphere. No, Earth is not a sphere. The effects of Earth curvature are merely the effects of perspective, removed from an Earth calculation that takes an hour value and reifies it in existence by way of a horizon, a not actual location where the sky appears to meet the ground, and turns it into the edge of a fundamentalist religious zealot's belief in a sphere. So next time any flat earthers who may be watching this broadcast are asked where their edge is, make it plain that we'd make no assertions about the edge. They're mistaking actual realists, otherwise known as flat earthers, with fake flat earthers who are part of the flat earth society who depict an edge. Now that's not us. The fundamentalist religious zealot globe believers, on the other hand, you definitely have an edge. You reify your edge, globe heads, into existence by way of begging the question, proof of nothing, perspective hijacking, earth curve calculator, utilising a not actual location called the horizon. Like on screen now. Any evidence of axial rotation? 
Ничего такого. Нет. Any scientific no, evidence of gravity? Uh, how old do you need them to be? Say that again. Have you seen a hypothesis for the ship? A hypothesis for gravity? No. No such hypotheses exist. So it's not so rain and snow and leaves falling is not gravity? How did they get up there? To fall. <laughs> did they have Small to did breeze. they first did they first have to rise from the ground in order to then fall? Yes. So it's kind of symbiotic relationship of what goes up must come down. Once things are in disequilibrium, they want to return to equilibrium. So it's not that we just have this magic amount of water stuck in the sky that wants to come down because of a force pulling it. It first travelled up. So you'd first need to explain why it went up. And then logically it's going to come back down again as it's in disequilibrium. No gravity. Well, it could be space-time bending. But what could be? I've just covered this. <laughs> the only way to make this assertion is to start with the rain, in your example, already in the sky, ignoring the fact that it had to get up there in the first place. So if you're going to claim a force that m must make things go down, well, no, to be there, it went up. Defying all necessity for a force pulling it back down again, it's returning to equilibrium. But the globe heads will ignore the fact that it went up in the first instance. Same with a microphone. Ignore the fact you've had to pick the damn thing up and just drop it and assert gravity. Well, no, it had to get up in the first instance. It wasn't hovering mid-air and then suddenly dropped. It was picked up. A force was used to get it out of equilibrium and then return it from whence it came. That's not gravity. That's forcing something out of equilibrium into disequilibrium and then returning it. And to add on top of that, space-time is a human concept, so you don't get any time in a cubic meter of space and you don't get any space in an hour. So that's just a human concept that does not exist anywhere else but the human brain. That's one of my favorite questions, you know. For a thousand debates, that's epic. How much time is there in a square meter of space? What epic question, that's so cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just when I first heard it, I was like, "That's so magical. <laughs> that's so cool." Because the end answer from the rumpus in that instance was, "Well, that's a totally illogical question." You're like, "Yeah, yeah." You took him where in that one question where I'd failed to in about twenty minutes. Epic. Happy to help. Any evidence? Didn't of the you distance? also say how, how much space is there in an hour? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what's the volume of an hour then? <laughs> <laughs> Epic. Brilliant. Any any evidence of the distance to the sun? No. There is obviously a certain distance with Oh we've got Brenda in. Hello, Brenda. <laughs> Did you have something to add or have I got issues? Or have you got issues? I've te tested the Discord. It seems to work. Oh, my mistake. I had my mic. No worries. There's an answer to that question. Which question? I've forgotten which one I asked. Distance the sun. No. The how much space is in a... How much time is in a, uh, a certain amount. Right. Everybody else be quiet. Go ahead, Brenda. S squared equals X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared minus C squared over T. Define T, please. You need to define what T is. T is time. Can you show it me like in physical reality, please? T is time. Yes, can you show me that in actual physicality, please? The answer is no. I mean, I don't want to spend 20 minutes pissing around with this or anything, but T being time, that's a concept, not real. So you're not going to ever show me this, are you? 
So how much time is no. a cubic meter of space? A well, time. time being a concept while she starts fucking talking. Can you not hear me talking, bitch? Yeah, shut your fucking bitch mouth and listen to me take apart your utter horse shit. Don't talk. You got it. Yeah, time's a concept. So you're not going to show me how much T is in this equation in actuality, are you? No, is the answer. Time so let's not piss around with your stupidity for the next 20 minutes. You're not going to show me a concept, are you, retard? No, is the answer. You can't show me that T. It's a concept. Time is not a concept. It's yeah, it fucking is, you stupid bitch. You can't show it me in actuality. It's not a physical thing. You can't fucking weigh it. It's not a thing, you stupid cow. Show me time now, is. right now. It's, it's Show me it. part of the universe. Show me it now. Show me yeah. a physical yeah. representation time is... of time. Show it me, so I can touch it. Um, oh, well, yeah. if you have a coffee cup, and it's that's a coffee cup. I don't oh, want you to so show cool. me something that's a coffee cup. I want you to show me time, which you cannot do. It's a concept. It's the distance the between <laughs> two events. Sorry, and you can show me that in physicality, can you? The distance mm. between two events. That's something you can physically show me. Yes. No, you can show me yes. a period yes. arbitrarily assigned with a number by you elapsing. You cannot show me time in physicality. It isn't physical. It's a concept! Uh, no, space-time is a real physical thing. No, it fucking isn't. You cannot show me time. You cannot show me space-time. It is pseudo. The description mathematically of this concept is a fake geometry. Pseudo-Ramonian force space. Length, breadth, depth and time. Not real. A concept a pseudo-geometry reified into existence by fundies like you because you're told by your priests that space-time is real. When challenged to show space-time, you can't! You can describe something elapsing over an arbitrarily assigned period that you will give it. Um, you know the hole in a donut? That's space-time. You're a moron. No, that's true. You're the a moron. Shut up. Donut Shut up. Don't say anything else. Time. Don't make me remove you. Shut up. You've got nothing the more to add. You're a moron. Hole in the donut, uh, I Brenda. couldn't care less. Wow. You're a moron. Don't the, hole in a, the hole in a donut. Shut the up. Hole I don't want to have to eject you. Based if time. you want to continue spouting shite about holes in donuts, I'm going to kick you out. Last chance. Shut up. Any evidence? No, I thought you were about debate. I thought you were about you fair can fuck debate. Off right now. You can fuck <laughs> off. I was asking a new question. Right now you don't get to take part. That's your problem. Stupid donut idiot. Donut hole is space time. What a complete moron. Any evidence of a self perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? No. no. Any evidence of the R value? Earth radius, the presupposition thereof. No, we got an airline they research keeps, uh, pilot researcher no, in here. Probably gonna try to talk about can, his uh curvature. Say that again. Say that again. I said we've got airline pilot researcher in here oh. who's probably gonna try to pipe up about his curvature. Oh, well, he's, he's going to have a hard time with that because all of us have been on airplanes and we don't see what he sees. Well, we might. Depends what he's reifying. I ain't talking nothing to you guys. Just watch my video. Plenty of dipping the nose around the curvature, but I ain't talking to you guys. Why are you here then? Oh, who's, what are you why doing? the hell are you here? And what curvature? Keep an eye on the flat derp. You see curvature in your video, eh? Yeah, just watch my time lapse. Airline pilot research, uh, global on uh, YouTube. What's it proving? Nice time lapse, dipping the nose around the curvature. So you dip dipping the nose while going out. You dip your nose. Dip your nose down. We've covered this with you. We've already pummeled you on this. 
you had to use a false equivalence for what you compare your tracking versus Polaris versus your actual position nose up. Your actual position's nose up. We already covered this with you. So what you've just thought we've forgotten about it two weeks later. We're not fucking morons. We haven't forgotten that we already pummeled this shit. Pulled it apart for about an hour. And eventually got you to the point where you conceded that you're actually describing nosing down. Because that's what you're supposed to be doing versus Polaris. But the plane's actually nosing up. You notice he's not saying a fucking word. You're just here to lie. We've already pummeled this. Uh, have you got memory problems, airline pilot? Have you got a memory issue? Have you, you seem to have gone silent and are now talking while I'm asking you if you've got an issue with your memory. We pummeled this two weeks ago. You claimed you were nosing down when you were actually nosing up because you equivocated what should be happening with lights in the sky versus what your plane actually does, which is nose up. Third time I've said it. Let's see if we get another stony silence. Did you watch a time lapse? Yo! Fuck it! We covered this already! Your plane doesn't nose down by your own admission! We fucking pummeled this! You stupid, dumb idiot! <sighs> Are you deaf? Are you having memory issues? Can you not hear me? Oh. Nose up! That's what you admitted! Hello! We already pummeled you, airline pilot! You gonna come and lie or just go silent? When we point out for the fifth time that you're not nosing down, as you've just claimed, incorrectly, for the second time, under the misapprehension that we have memory issues. We don't. We pummeled you. You gonna reply? Yeah. Sit your ass back down, pilot. You utter fucktard. You haven't got proof of you nosing down. By your own admission, you nose up. So sit down. Shut up. Good dog. Any evidence in the entire history of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, and astrophysics of any viable hypothesis? Never heard of them. Definitely no. Wouldn't, it, they, wouldn't they be listed uh, somewhere if there was? Uh, how could they have a hypothesis if they can't get past observation? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's dead right there in the water. All they can do is look at stuff. These people piss me off so much. Oh, that concludes housekeeping. Yay! I think we forget, like, two weeks later, that Grim V did it last, before Airline Pilot. Just thinks we've forgotten that we've absolutely ripped him a new asshole, and how painstakingly it was that we had to do it to get to the bottom of their bullshit. And then they come back two weeks later and assert the exact same shite. It's just a bloody outrage. Rinse and repeat. As he, as he addressed it, as he said, oh, yeah, yeah, do actually nose up. That's in total defiance of my belief in a sphere. No, just silence and a reassertion of the total bullshit we took apart two weeks ago. Not a concession that he actually noses up by his own admission that he's peaking doublespeak to get around the fact that he doesn't match the globe. No, no, none of that's addressed. Just a reassertion of the original bullshit that was wrong and pulled apart here by us. No wonder you don't want to talk to us and just punt your shit video. What, so you can force other people into the false misapprehension that you nose down, like declared at your beginning of your time here today? What, did you think we'd forgotten? I'm I talking to you, airline yeah, pilot. I, 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 did you think we forgot? What did you take us for?
Yeah, you're pissing down our back and telling it's, it's, us it's raining, airline pilot. Yeah? Do you think we'd forget that we ripped you a new asshole over a very prolonged period of time? Yeah, my memory's not that bad, mate. Your planes nose up. They prove Earth's flat. They prove the complete contradiction of what you've come here to claim today, thinking we're forgetful. Your plane proves we're on a plane. Your plane noses up for the entirety of its duration of its flight across a flat surface. It's not nosing down. It's not losing altitude. It's not scrubbing off the drop, despite Polaris doing it. And you claiming that that's what the plane does, even though it isn't. Yeah, do you not, you know, any of this swinging memories back in your head? No, no subtle flashbacks of us ripping this apart once already? Just silence, mate, right? Maybe assert again know that the plane like noses speak. down. Just let me know when it's my turn to speak. Never, you arrogant fucking liar. You've asserted the same lie we took apart when you were last here. Your arrogance level is off the scale. You're not telling me about the familiarity you have of you nosing up by your own admission. You're not explaining that you're sorry that you've asserted the exact same lie and are trying to direct people to your video that no doubt highlights that exact same lie that we took apart the last time you were here. So when do you get to speak? Never, you disgusting human being. We've already taken your shite lie to pieces based on your misapprehensions and your false equivalence with what a star does. Any of this bringing back any memories? Yeah, you can reply. I give you permission. And then he said his plane was flying level to gravity, which he still hasn't been able to define. So, it wasn't. Yeah. That's not true, <laughs> though, is it? That. Regardless of his assertions, he's nosing up. He made that clear with the degrees it was doing it by, but just gave us a false equivalence with what it should be doing based on what Polaris does, and then said that's all because of gravity. Who gives a shit what he asserted? The plane's nosing up by his own bloody admission. I'll give that one to Chocolate Man. He did just correctly identify exactly what the guy said. Well done. That's his, that's his, that's his autopilot. Okay. So none of us have forgotten, airliner, that you've already been pummeled on your claim that you made here just for the second time. Then I think at one point he did say his, his plane was pitching up while nosing down at the same yeah. time or something. Yeah, it's a complete <laughs> contradiction. So. Hello. Nathan, I hope you don't mind. I've given Rumpus a link because we were chatting offline and got lost to try and put him. Rumpus thinks that in a vacuum chamber, if you have a vacuum, he thinks a pressure gradient, a density, no, a pressure gradient would form in a vacuum. He doesn't think that it would fill the available volume. Does anybody think about that? Does anybody agree with Rumpus? No. <laughs> right. Say well, that wait. one more time. Okay, here we go. Let me explain it carefully. If you have a vacuum chamber that is tall enough, let's say 60 miles, at the top of the vacuum chamber, when you've pumped in, you know, whatever however amount of gas you want to, well, especially put in a pressure. Right? If you put it in at um, atmospheric pressure at the top of that sixty-mile vacuum chamber, there'll be a near vacuum. Doesn't have any evidence to support the assertion. He's, it's based in theoretical physics, but absolutely he thinks it's not. True. Absolutely not. It's based in experimentation. If, for instance, you take oh, yeah? a high, if you take a high altitude balloon in the atmosphere and do this effectively the same thing, because effectively the atmosphere is a sixty foot tall container. Well, not container, but sixty foot sixty foot tall anyway. Um, if you then, as we hopefully no one is denying in this hangout, the pressure at the top is near a vacuum, and therefore exactly the same thing would happen in a vacuum chamber if you filled it with a similar density of gas as there is in the atmosphere. It would also form at the top near a vacuum, but the, but for a small chamber that's close to the ground, uh, it's only say a foot a foot or so in um, dimensions. It the difference between the top and the bottom because the pressure gradient that occurs in the atmosphere and also occurs in any gas that's in the Earth's magnet uh, gravitational field. You we have instruments that can detect. The, what is effectively is a little bit of pooling going on at the bottom of a vacuum chamber. If you fill it with gas, the density and the pressure at the bottom of your chamber will be very, 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 very slightly denser than, say, a foot above it. And we've got um, sensors that are sufficiently sensitive 
to detect this. And in fact, Toady has actually had one of these. It's so sensitive that if you raise it up by just a few centimeters, it can tell you how much you've raised it up by, by the pressure difference in the air. That's well, how what about in a vacuum? But same would happen. The air, the atmosphere is in a vacuum. It's exactly no different. A vacuum chamber that you filled that was 60 miles high would behave exactly like the atmosphere. But we know what happens when a vacuum is exerted, uh, when a vacuum and an air like mix together, uh, sorry, are exposed to each other. We know that there is mixing. But yeah. you're saying that's not true. They do mix, yes. But, but, the, but the gravitational attraction will cause it to pool at the bottom. But in a one foot high chamber or any experiment you do in the lab, the difference is so small. Even if you would know, if you've got, you know, a two hundred, hundred meters, for instance, you know, the <laughs> so, difference that is uh, it's so small in the lab. So Nathan, do you remember back in when we first started arguing over is? Do you remember when we had the um, the um, the demonstration at Rumpusad, and he had the little? Um, we were talking about the egg. It was when the egg experiment came up at some point, and I asked him when we had the Action Labs helium balloon burst. I asked him what happens to the helium. Does it fill the available volume or does it pool at the bottom? And his answer was, well, it fills the container. And yeah. that was Nathan's answer as well. Because and I the thought container it was, was only a foot You're interrupting him, Rumpus. Do you mind? I didn't hear the end of his statement. I, I appreciate that he's probably saying something devastating, but can you not interrupt him? Well, it's just that we're at the point where we need to know what happens in the vacuum chamber when the helium balloon pops. Does it fill the available volume the way that we're told, or does it pool at the bottom and create a density gradient like Rumpus now seems to have changed his position and says it's the, it's, it's the second. Right, no, but the it, thing is, it, Anthony, because you don't understand things I tell you, I have to give you simple things. And the difference between the pooling effect is so small in the experiment that we were talking about in that little vacuum chamber was only a foot high. Effectively, you can say as far as you, you in terms of the physics or just considering it, this pooling is so small you can ignore it. But if you have a chamber that's 60, even 100 metres high, you would see the pressure gradient go. So can you uh, prove this, though? Sorry, so, yes. so if we have a chamber... But with 60 miles high, you would have a vacuum at the top of it, yes. So, Can you prove it? Oh, excuse, sorry. So so we would require a chamber for this example then? A container? Well, you wouldn't actually because the atmosphere isn't effectively in a vacuum. Sorry, so I'm not asking you thing. to now give me a, your equivocation that the atmosphere does as your example does. I'm asking specifically that in your example, your example would require a container. No, it doesn't require... Yeah, it did. You gave your example. It had a container. It was 60 miles high. And for your example to work, you described what would happen in that container that is 60 miles high. Now, I appreciate that at some point you're going to simply equivocate that the atmosphere is the same as the chamber... But I'm not going to let you because I'm just going to simply point out that your example requires a container. It's that simple, Rumpus. Now, I appreciate that while I've given this description, you've talked through every single word I've said, preventing anybody in the hangout hearing me. And for that reason, I'm going to have to take action to stop you from doing that. Once I've finished... I'll open the mic and assess whether or not you've listened to what I've said. And if you haven't, I'll just choose to assume that you're not involved in engaging in actual conversation and instead only interested in obfuscating every single word I say. So let's see how that goes. Anthony, if you can hear me... Anthony, said, I'll have to start a new hangout because your he guest has brought with him total but chaos. So I'll have to start a, a new hangout. I have no option. Audio chaos will ensue if I don't take action. What a crock of crap. Ultimately, Rumpus' example has the use of a 60 foot or 60 mile or 100 mile container. And without the container... There can be no pressure. Now, as described while he was here rumpusing the living hell out of me, he will at some stage be making that false equivalence that the atmosphere is the same as his container example. However, without the container, there can be 
no pressure. I appreciate the Rumpus needs to obfuscate that at every opportunity, and the moment I started to intervene and discuss that matter, Rumpus had to talk non-stop. It was the only tactic to stop the destruction of his false equivalents coming to pass. Stop Nathan's words at all cost. The only tactic Rumpus now has. Never mind, it's unfortunate that that's their only tactic and they don't have anything other than a fallacy of false equivalents to offer in this example. Again, my apologies to Anthony, who has been led down this merry dance with a claimed experiment using a 60-mile container. Yeah, I think not. There was no experiment using a 60-mile container. We wouldn't have got to the stage where we got those ascertained facts from Rumpus because he would have absolutely forbidden that from happening. Anyway, disappointing it's as scary. always, Rumpus. is always going to be that way. Sorry, did someone want to add something from Discord? Yeah, sorry about that. I was not trying to rumpus you. I was just trying to find a gap there. Um, I just said that he's King Idiot. Some The King Idiot died and Rumpus took over. Meanwhile, we got a, a full panel here on Discord and we've got some ballers. Uh, five or six of them. Uh, welcome back, the one. Welcome back, Righteous Force. Hello. 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 Hello, Tenth Man. Yeah, I just told Rumpus off. ballers have any claims to make? Uh, Anthony's, Anthony's. I guess no, two more hours. He contacted me on Skype. No, no, we're still, we're still live. Got another half an hour on this live show. At least. And then there'll be an after show, and then there'll be a second show because it's a Friday. Anyway, he said, "He said, go outside, look at the sky. There's your, uh, there's your atmosphere without a container. <laughs> go demonstrate it. Yeah, go outside. Stupid dialogue. Yeah, circular reasoning. Same exact thing that uh, son of an astronaut M. Scott Veach did. They assert that you go outside and look at a gas pressure, and because I've got a fundamentalist belief that the sky is a vacuum." There's your gas pressure without a container. Circular reasoning. Now, me, I was addressing the fact that the only reason he was making that example to get Anthony to concede that there'd be a pooling of gas at the bottom of a 60-mile container would be so he could make a false equivalence that the atmosphere is the same as a container with an imaginary force of gravity holding it. Whereas his, his example has a container because without the container, there can be no pressure. But at the point that I started to highlight that, which you guys didn't get to hear... He ensued his usual tactic of stop the demolition reaching anybody. Talk non-stop. That's right. Oh, well. <laughs> it's all they've got. Yeah, he's, he's all out of any bullets for his side. He, everything he says is circularly reasoning, begging the question fallacy right from the beginning. It's like uh, like Nathan said earlier, another one just trying uh, coming here and trying to make their point no matter what. Yeah, he's, he's, all they've got now is more and more ingenious ways or seemingly ingenious ways of working in the begging the question fallacy or working in the false analogy, uh, false equivalence. So in this example, take Anthony on a very long merry dance about a 60 mile container and what would happen in it. So at some point he can say, my atmosphere does that. It's like, well, no, you're giving examples of how you can do that using a container. Because without the container, there can be no pressure. That's why you've got a container in your example. He just didn't get away with using that as an example of an equivalence with his atmosphere. Well, therefore, the atmosphere does that because we've done an experiment with a 60-mile gas chamber. No, you're just making our point that you need a container. I think you'll find useless. Well, this I mean, is, that was a pretty poor attempt. Just... What's the difference between what he said with his 60-mile container and hillbilly blue balls with his long pipe and the heavier gas uh, needing time to escape? What's the difference? There's no um, difference. Bo both require containment. Both have containment right. and are not analogous to a marble in a sky vacuum because that has no containment. But they're making their examples with containers uh, because you need one of them. <laughs> Hey, I'm so glad you. 
I'm so glad you cut their legs discord. off at that point, the minute the begging the fallacy starts. Yeah, he didn't actually get to do it. He didn't actually get to the point where he was capable of saying, well, the atmosphere does that, because I started pointing out before he got a chance that that was what he was going to do. I mean, that pisses them off more than anything when I predict how they're going to segue. <laughs> that really winds them up. <laughs> We've all been doing this way too long. We, we know the arguments, how to unpack the arguments, why the arguments are fallacious, and the route that the fundy will take to make that fallacious assertion. We know every move they're going to make to the point where we can pretty much make predictions. The, the last one that I've come across was in the last couple of days. It's like, why are they circle jerking to the point of total humiliation? What's in it for them? And the answer is because they want to make the assertion at the end come hell or high water. So the defence that's chopping them off at the knees before they've even made the assertion, they don't care about. They just keep making the same assertion so that they can draw the conclusion at the end. One of you's on not on mute in G+. Can you pop yourself on? Go on. So yeah, they just want to circle jerk you indefinitely. They might the same assertion, ask you an inappropriate or irrelevant question while you're making your devastating point that they're ignoring. So that it can keep circle jerking in the face of total humility when they're absolutely proven to be wrong. Or in this case, with Rumpus, backing our argument. So your example, to draw false equivalents that I'm not going to let you get to, has a container. Yeah, yeah, you need that container, don't you, for the example. Yeah, but Earth hasn't got any containment. So, yeah, this just backs our argument. That was the worst ever effort by Rumpus. Because all it did was get him on the show describing what would happen in a container well earth doesn't have that and you didn't get to make your little false equivalents did you <laughs> fuck you <laughs> i'm not just not gonna let you why would i it's my show what you needed to make your false equivalents you needed to make your uh fallacious argument and i didn't let you i'd go and fucking mo moan about the mute button nathan didn't let me make my false equivalents he wouldn't let me put my false analogy out there he wouldn't let me make my fallacious argument. He muted me. Yeah, you're damn right. I heard enough. I heard 60 ah. mile container. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. You making an, an analogy, not experiment, with a 60 mile container. Yeah, yeah, you'll need one of them around Earth to still have gas. Shame you haven't. What's that you say? You were going to just tell me that that's how the atmosphere was and I didn't let you? Yeah, moan about it in the comments, fundies. Yeah, I'll do it for him. Rumpus would assert... That the atmosphere is like that container. There you go. I made the argument for him. Shame it doesn't have a container though. Because then it would be just like the container example he gave. And as Conspiracy Cats makes plain. Without the container there can be no pressure. Conspiracy Cats 2019. Or Conspiracy Cats 2019. Without the balloon there can be no. Uh, there is no pressure. I'll say that again. Without the balloon there is no pressure. Analogous to containment for gas pressure is this balloon describing the containment required to have a gas pressure. So yeah, you need that container in your example. Earth doesn't have one though. Bad luck, Rumpus. It's so obvious. One more thing now, he'll complain that he... You killed his Trojan horse. It's so obvious. They start with a container. So to prove we don't have a container is so dumb. Yeah, his sneaky little tactic trying to get in here with the Trojan horse. Not even sneaky. He's identifying a container. This is the mind of the fanatical R believer. Yeah, that backfired badly for the Globe side. It would have worked out reasonably okay had he have got an opportunity to make his false equivalents and just say, yeah, the sky's like that. The sky's like that container with solid sides and a roof. Oh, is it? No, it isn't, because if it was, you wouldn't be flying to Mars in your bullshit world of Narnia space, would you? You wouldn't be going out to the moon. You certainly wouldn't be sending probes back to take pictures of us from claimed to be Jupiter, a giant mass of gas in a vacuum yeah you wouldn't be getting those pictures if we had a container around us like that vacuum chamber that's 60 miles high to give your analogy 
Yeah, you need it for your analogy, but Earth doesn't have it, my friend. That's very unfortunate for a fundamentalist religious belief in a sphere, in a vacuum now, isn't it? Because the gas would fill the space. Entropy would increase. The second law of thermodynamics absolutely applies to Earth, Rumpus, regardless of your stupidity assertions that it doesn't apply. That's just because your globe in a vacuum would need that natural law defying but it is a natural law and will apply always regardless of your fundy belief in a sky vacuum and if i can conclude on top of that there is no time in our space here for rumpus or to paraphrase it there is no space in our time for rumpus yeah give me the weight of tea I can if you put it in the bag, a container. Not T E A. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Give me the uh, temperature of time. Give me the dimensions of it. Dimensions are it's the size of Rumpus and Brenda's heads. <laughs> it's T. Come on. T, Nathan. Brenda told you already. You don't accept his answer? Excellent rebuttal. Almost as good as Brenda's. My donut shop sells space time and little round balls. <laughs> you can ask the Discord for the participants. We got No Man, The Truth, Dougie, Bobo. You're making me crazy in trade. Any of you have anything to say regarding the nature of Earth? Over. What's your vector, Victor? So it's Friday. It's a fantastic day. We've already had donuts for space time. A yeah. pilot, a pilot talking about. Uh, nose up and nose down, and then Rumpus comes on with a 60-mile container. What a morning. Well, to be fair, I hope not echoing, but uh, Brenda was kind of right. It is kind of conceptualized as a donut. The thing is, it's just an assumption, though. It's an assumption right? why the entire universe is the way that they want it to be, how they visually sort of want it to be, how they wanted it to be original. And Einstein basically just provided the math in order for them to mathematically say, it is like this, and that is gravity. And What so the heck are you talking about, Arwen? The nonsense about the that, that, that made this all arrive. The whole, what, what the what heck are think you talking about is in their mind. conceptualized donut hole? Right. As a what hole in space. About? What space? What the, space the, time across, fictional, across wire, purely fictional. Nothing about it is real, but that's Well then what why are you happened. talking about it? He's he's saying that what she was about to describe would be the mathematical description of space time with Einstein's description being parroted off by her in terms of this donut. But yeah, she was being asked to show time. So I appreciate what Arwen's saying, but it's obviously got your your heckles up because you're, he's phrasing it, well, she's right. Well, no, she's going to describe something that's conceptual. That doesn't give us a physicality to it. It doesn't answer the question that was on the table, even though she's going to parrot off her rhetoric correctly, which is what Arwen's saying. Well, yeah, I, well, he didn't, I could have, he didn't. I can attempt to take that next step for them instead. It's still not going to solve anything. It's just going to move the bar further down the lane. Hey, Arwen, but next time you want to do this, please start with a disclaimer. Like once they are in Narnia and they want to describe how the lights work, this is what they are taught. Hmm? He's saying if you're talking about their version of the world in which they reify then you need to make it clear first that you're not saying she's right because actually that is what the way of the world is, but she's right in terms of how their religion describes the reification she's currently making when arguing with us, which is what was right. happening in that argument. Regardless of whether or not she can accurately describe what Einstein came up with, 
in his noggin. Right, but yeah, sir, I think I came on a little late, so I might have missed the, the actual question part. I just heard her out and thought like, oh, of course, of course, Brenda. But she got in my chat like this as well, but it just quickly timed her out. Well, I don't, I'm not saying well, don't she's explain saying that, uh, what they well, believe or how they believe it, but just start with a disclaimer as to that's the position that you're, you're trying to take to share. You just jumped in there and said, well, she's kind of right. <laughs> with me, she's kind of right. Yeah, I just improvised because I didn't have the full picture because I didn't actually <laughs> answer the question. I was just assuming it because it's so often the same. In this case, it wasn't. Apparently, it was ask time, and she just wrongly answered. I had no idea because I didn't hear the question when I came. Uh, fair in. enough. You, you know, you know their arguments so well, Aaron. You just jump in there and finish it. That's that's how good you know their arguments. So <laughs> you're giving yeah. a better argument than they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I like these toys, but they're just fooling around and breaking them. And I just like, like, come on, at least try to make it look a little better. You know, that, that's my response at this point. It's just so bad what they do now. Wow, that was an interesting way of looking at it. So you're saying like the heliocentric models, like an intri intricate piece of technical Lego. And it's got really yeah. clear instructions. It says what it's supposed to do. And once you've actually put it together correctly, it will do that. And you're watching them butcher the Lego and stick it up or hotchpotch. And <laughs> you're going, yeah, exactly. oh, the Lego's That's much exactly more elegant than that. that like. <laughs> Why can't you let the model shine? The up your nose. <laughs> yeah, just, just please enjoy the beauty. Don't ruin it, you know. Enjoy the imagination while you can, still can believe it. Yeah. Don't We've try to ruin AI, it when their, Don't their model, force it on other people. Shit. Their model's but, impressive. Wouldn't you agree? It's a very well thought out, intricate. It's got a lot of uh, what would be issues ironed out. For example, when people come to me with impossible moons, there's I, I can't. Re there might be one. I vaguely remember one, but most of the time, ninety nine percent of the time, people have. They've got a moon that's perfectly workable on a heliocentric model with all their presuppositions in place. Mm -hmm. So their model's really elegant. You know, after right. the fact, I was like, you look back at it from the outside in rather than just believing that's your world and go, wow, it's actually a really impressive feat that they've achieved with the heliocentric model. Right. It's not real, uh, I... but, you know. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. I kind of see it as like an advanced, more adult Santa Claus. Yeah, because yeah. that break, that's for children, though. It's much more transparent. You'll quicker get through this. This one is very tough. It's a real tough mind puzzle. And you got to be really alert with what you've been taught. And yeah, I see. Well, it's a I don't know. I think that it was originally designed as a cultural game that would basically force people at some point it would be a test of adulthood like do you understand that this is not real that it was originally designed for that and i'm talking about long long ago because the ones that have been applying it in the last century they've gone obvious other directions but that seems to be inherent in the design yeah. i feel and and some of the fakery is overt in my humble humble opinion if you can't see through yes. some of the fakery, which is pretty particularly bad, I'm not going to go into details of NASA fakery on the ISS or the fake moon landings, but you know what I will say is just go and have a look at it. And if you can't spot just how fake it is, then you you're never gonna you know you want to be lied to because it is over with those particular pieces. But the model itself, in terms of its you know technical prowess, is far more impressive than the fakery of mere mortal men and their cinematography that's always going to be shite by comparison but you know well thought out model and how it works within its own presuppositions of course isn't uh, hidden either it, though just by our own language it's a model right well what's right. a model it's not reality and they make that plain when they tell you about the heliocentric model and how they right. might just change the model so obviously but, they're making but, it plain but, that it's not real but also to back it up a little it's not 
the the people that have been working on the whole thing, especially the the real one, the overseers that are really making decisions for where it should go and all that. Uh, it's not they take it very serious like to them it's like deadly serious design it's not a toy it's not like a game to them building that no the, it had to be perfect it was important or it wouldn't work it had to be perfect so a lot of people put a lot of energy with their intelligence into making it so seemingly flawless on the surface What's the biblical oh, it, reference? Yeah, oh, just one second, the one. Uh, Tenth Man, what's the biblical reference about not trying to figure out what the heavens and the earth actually are? I'm sure there's a reference. I can't remember what it is. Uh, I'll look for the one that you're looking for, but what comes to mind is, of course, my ways are not your ways. And so, you know, the mind of God and the mind of man, there's such a vast difference between the two. So I'll look for it and I'll, and I'll try to get back. Well, I just recall something about not, like, uh, how does it, not imagining what is, like, uh, above in the heavens and below. You familiar with that one, Tough Man? I think so you and I are talking about the same one, that? Righteous. I think, I think it's going to be in the book of, I think it's going to be in the book of Job. Give me a minute. Yeah, a lot of these things are in Job, aren't they? Like, don't so, I, I would incorrectly use the word science-y. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's most likely in Job because uh, Job is being asked questions, I believe, and he's, there's there's questions that he can't answer, and there are questions in the realm that he has existed in, yet he can't answer. So how how much more can he really answer any questions or understand anything outside of the realm that he lives in type deal. Okay. Uh, it's chapter 38. I'll just highlight some of it. I think this is what you're asking for. And the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand who marked off its dimensions. Surely you know. Who stretched measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone while the morning star sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped the thick darkness when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place? When I said, this far you may come and no farther, here's where your proud waves halt. It just goes on and on. It's beautiful. It's like saying, where were you, Job? That is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, guys, can I have the mic now? Yeah, sorry, the one. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I was planning in the beginning to go with the words, uh, God has its ways, but now... Literally, this is what happened because we started this topic. And uh, as you know, in the beginning, it may be a little bit frustrating for some some people, but bear with me just for a minute. So uh, you know that uh, back in the days, like maybe six or seven months ago, I claimed the discovery. And uh, last night I came to the realization of it and I put the final piece of the puzzle together. Uh, and as you stated, Tentman, that what is here, it's not what it's above there. And because we have the scientific method, um, we figured out uh, what's the purity of the substance and why here and up there it's not the same. Uh, and at the end, it's turned to be uh, the neutral charges and actually what we've been taught our whole life about the vacuum. It's wrong that vacuum actually, it's full of stuff and it's only a neutral charge. That's why it dissolves everything. So basically, I, today I managed to write the hypothesis, to finish the hypothesis, which I was working on for three months. So that's why I wanted to make a massive, huge and enormous shout out and thank you to Nathan Oakley and John Quantum Eraser because like you're the people that primarily pushed me 
and made this process possible. So without you and like your uh, non-stop guidance about the stuff that you have to be persistent and you have to be accurate and you have to uh, apply the scientific method. So that's what made it possible for me and pushed my brain to, to think and to find that answer. And uh, I think we we managed to find it. So I spoke with Flatsoid last night and he had his mind blown away by what I told him. So massive shout out to Quantum Eraser and to Nathan. So when, when does this information get revealed? Uh, well, I, it, as you know, I figured out the experiment, but the hypothesis was, to be honest, total shit. I didn't have a viable hypothesis, so I managed last night to finish it and I wrote it today. So now I have almost everything set up for the experiment, so I'll be able to run it. Go. Cool. Very cool. Fascinating. Well, hopefully we'll find out a little That's bit great, more yeah. in the uh, in the after show. But unfortunately, for those of you watching on the Nathan Oakley live stream, this is going to be where we bid you farewell. So a huge, massive, enormous thank you, first and foremost, to all of today's debating panel for making this live show possible. Of course, a massive thank you to all of you in the live audience for tuning in, hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley. Stay tuned if you're watching on the Nathan Oakley 1980 premiering stream, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! So what are you going to do then? You're going to just make a video about it? You're going to fill us in in the chats with your hypothesis? You're going to tell us now what your independent and dependent variable are while we're recording? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm I'm planning now I'll translate the hypothesis to English. Uh, then I'll be setting up the experiment, filming the whole thing, making paper about it, publish it. Uh, the experiment is still the same. It's... Uh, double slit uh, through a vacuum uh, intersected by high voltage. So what the uh, intent of the experiment is to uh, show that matter can simultaneously express, uh, let's say in brackets, a physical and electrical motion without being uh, disturbed. Like the medium has the qualities to do it. That's why that that's why we had this huge, uh, you know, battle between a wave and a particle, but it's not neither of those. It's just a system of charges that can do both things simultaneously. And that's what they thought the ether was. And for, from what I'm getting and what I'm researching and all the observations I did, it shows to me that vacuum is a, just the neutral charge, a neutron. And when you pull vacuum, like in a box or something, you're left with neutrons. And that's why it has this uh, force because all the other charges were repelled out. So they want to squeeze back in. And um, this is what actually uh, one of the purest substances we can have on Earth. It's a gaseous neutrons. OK. So if, if you were a globe head, I know you're not making specific assertions yet. You're saying that you're formulating hypotheses, but step one would be, what's your observed phenomena? Oh, it's uh, diffraction of light. Okay. For a medium. So it's you simultaneously to testing the medium and proving that the medium uh, creates the diffraction and that it can be distorted by running high voltage through it. So it's a quality of the medium. But your wave function, that, that is distortion. So 
What are you trying to accomplish? Well, to show that uh, nothing is traveling is just a charge being transmuted through different system of charges. Okay. I'm sorry. I, was I mean, I see you word? demonstrated. Well, yeah, get it, get it written down. We'll have a read. Oh, yeah. yeah. It will be interesting. We'll, we'll see how it will turn out. Uh, well, I am up for some kind of transmutation theory, you know. I've heard it through alchemy, this kind of thing before. It's just kind of surprised to find out from you that there might actually be something to it. <laughs> so. Well, all observations point in that way. Uh, if you can actually demonstrate that, that would be great. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with a few few more tests around it, like uh, vaporizing water, superheating it uh, with a measurement of moisture to see that all the excess that we get in gaseous form actually doesn't contain any moisture, but we get it solely from water. Adesion, do you think that the whole transmutation thing is specifically concerning water and baseline gases? Or is that where it can be found? Or are there other things that show similarities to that as well? Well, in the industry, in the industry, yeah. in the industry you can see that all they do to produce certain stuff is to uh, bake them, boil them, uh, you know, uh, the, the towers that produce petrol, for example, they they just distill them. It's, it's all there is to it. And ele electrolysis, that's it. Hey, QE. It's cooking. Yeah, but that's to split apart the compounds and then that's called re refining. Yeah, they, they just exchange charges and they change their behavior due to how much positive and negative charges they have. But are you saying it's not splitting apart in separate type of substances? Mm, yeah. It is or it isn't? It, it is not. It is just transmuting. It's it's always the same so, substance. It just gains different what? qualities. But seriously, uh, from what I've learned about the oil industry is that petrochemicals, the refining of it leaves a lot of very toxic benzene related waste product that really can't be used. Are you saying that doesn't exist? No, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. You get byproducts from different reactions, but uh, the main thing is that you just uh, purify stuff. That's the whole idea. That's everything that man does. Is no, but that's refining. <laughs> that's just chemical yeah, industry. Yeah. That, but of course, but that that doesn't disprove chemistry. No, no, it doesn't. It's just very convoluted in chemistry. Okay. Can you just anyway. summarize? Can you just summarize your point? It's getting convoluted. Just summarize your point. Yeah. Well, my point is that uh, uh, vacuum is a natural element, and it's not the absence of substance. is actually a place where it's void of positive and negative charges, and you contain all the neutrons. That that no, give me a summary statement. That don't explain it. Just say it in the statement. Well, if I have to summarize it, it will be something like uh, everything is contained inside a system of charges, all matter, and it contains all its qualities. Okay. Fine. And what is that system? Well, basically, 
Uh, that's just purely my theoretical, non-scientific opinion about it, is that the neutron is a membrane between the electrons and the protons. Right. No, the system, the system in the macro, not the micro. If the system in the macro, is that a, uh, our Earth within a container? So you, you can't have gas pressure without a container. Are you talking that system or what are you talking when you say system? Uh, well, it actually, it's a copy from the smallest to the biggest thing. So it's kind of like stays the same. And you have one proton, then you have a shell around it of a neutron, and then you have one electron on the outside. So it's a closed system, but you need the barrier between the two. And this is what I've realized last night. So you're correlating how the neutrons, electrons, and how they are working with each other in, in that system, just in the micro. And you're saying that is in your theory that is the same to anything bigger including our earth and our container that earth is in well not the same but probably a bit similar because it reflects its own quality all right well our argument just for example is you can't have gas pressure without a container right yeah so if the globe say there's outer space and the vacuum of space, the gas would fill the available space, correct? Yeah. We also know you can't have a vacuum without a container. Absolutely. So what are you saying at the end of the day? Well, it is contained somehow, somewhere. I'm not claiming that I know how, but it's just the, the dissolvement from high pressure gradiated matter to low pressure and there is a barrier holding this all together but it's just that gradient of charges interacting with each other it's a right, pure, but, pure energy barrier right but if if you have a pure energy barrier why do you need a container still a container right but if you have seen the videos of people having a membrane between two compartments, one being a vacuum, the other being gas. And once they remove the membrane, the gas fills the available space, right? Yeah, I, I'm saying just that underneath what's containing the gas, there is low pressure. And that's where uh, the charges get more pure, speaking that there is only neutrons in that space. That's why we get the low pressure because the positive and negative charges are distributed back down. Okay. But if there was no container, would they come back down? No, you couldn't have the whole system without a container. You still need the container. It's like the development of the human uh, embryo. It starts by producing more cells and then creates high pressure inside a closed system. And that's what makes it develop and gives it more energy because it has yeah. the information. Okay. It seems like if I'm understanding you right, you're, uh, you're uh, focusing in on each thing within our system that's contained and describing how each thing works by itself within that full system. Yeah, basically. Okay. I got it now. So to hear the continuation of this conversation, you'll have to tune in to tomorrow's Sunday show at the same time, 10 p.m. But in the meantime, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who did tune in on the Nathan Oakley 1980 premiering stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Of course, another massive thank you to all of today's Discord and G Plus panel for making this after show possible. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!